In this lesson, we're going to talk about network addressing. Now, it's important that you understand that every host on a particular network has to have an address. Otherwise, we don't know which host information goes to. Let's take a look down here. It's kind of like delivering the mail on the street where you live. Let's say we've got a street, we've got several different cul-de-sacs here, and there's a variety of houses all the way along the street. If I need to send a letter, say from my house here, over to my neighbor over here, I have to know that neighbor's address in order to be able to send that message to him. And if I address my envelope properly, I will provide a return address that says, this is where the letter came from in case for some reason isn't delivered, it can be returned back to me. In addition, we also specify who the letter is to, right? Put our stamp on it. And by putting it in the mail, the mail person can pick it up and say, okay, this goes over to here and delivers the mail to that particular person. Just as the mail needs addressing, so does a computer network. Each computer that resides on the computer network has to have an address assigned to it. So we know where we're sending information. In addition, just as with the mail, we usually assign a return address to things too, so we know where the information's coming from and where it's going. It's important that you understand that on a computer network, you must have unique addresses assigned to computer systems. If we look back at the mail example, imagine what would happen if three or four different houses on your street all had exactly the same address. Would that work? No, because the, the mail person gets a hold of the mail and says, mm, let's see, it goes to you know, this particular address, and there's three different houses that have the same address. So you'd have to just kind of guess, well, maybe it goes to this one. The same with computer networks. We have to use a unique address for every different host. Otherwise, we have a mess because we don't know who the information is going to or who it's coming from. With that in mind, you need to understand that there are two different types of addresses used on a computer network. There's a physical hardware address, and then there's a logical address. Let's first talk about um, physical hardware addresses. This physical address is also called the MAC address, M-A-C, which stands for Media Access Control. That's the MAC address. We have a computer network here, and we have several different computers attached to it. Each computer has a MAC address assigned to it. In fact, if we were to attach a network printer as well, it also would have a MAC address. The MAC address is a globally unique identifier that's actually burned into the read-only memory of every network interface card. So if we have a NIC here, network interface card, that we connect to the network medium with, we install this in an expansion slot in the particular computer, there's a little ROM chip on here. And on that ROM chip is the MAC address. It comes from the factory. Each manufacturer of network adapters has a block of addresses assigned to it by the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers called the IEEE. You'll see that a lot. The MAC address is a 48-bit value. However, we usually don't work with it in its binary form. What we use is hexadecimal. and It actually ends up being a 12-character hex number. For example, the MAC address for this network board could be something to the effect of 00095B36C293. Remember that hexadecimal is a base 16 counting system. Instead of going 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, like we do with decimal, with hexadecimal, we go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then instead of going to 10, we go A, B, C, D, E, F. And in that way, we create a hexadecimal MAC address. The first six characters, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, this much of the MAC address is unique to the manufacturer.
This is a common number that's assigned by the IEEE to the board manufacturer and all of their network boards MAC addresses start with that particular number. The last six characters is a unique hexadecimal number that's assigned to that particular network board. It's important to note that hopefully, theoretically, no two network boards in the world should have the same MAC address. They should all be different. Back in the old days, some network boards, you could set the MAC address with a couple of dip switches or some jumpers. And in, you know, when you have that kind of situation, it is possible to have duplicate MAC addresses. Today, with modern uh, network interface cards, you should not ever run into two network boards in the world that have the same MAC address. So let's say we have this network right here, and we need to send information from host A over here to host B. Well, how do we do that? With MAC addresses, we can specify that information go from host A to host B. We simply have our piece of information that we're sending, and within that information, we have what's called a header right up here. This is the data. This is the data. This is the header of a particular piece of information. This header will contain the to and the from for this particular information. The to will be the MAC address of the recipient, in this case host B. The from will be the MAC address of the system that's sending the information, in this case host A. So that's how the hardware or MAC addresses on a computer network work. Now, when you and I go and set up a computer network, we actually don't do a whole lot with MAC addresses because A, they're burned onto the board. Um, there's nothing you can, ch can change or configure. And B, we tend to use logical addressing to address hosts instead of physical addressing. Understand that every host on the network has a physical hardware address. However, most of the work we do with this, these hosts has to do with their logical addresses. Now, a physical address is one that's hardwired into the network interface. A logical address is an address that we can assign ourselves. And the way we assign it is based on the protocol being used. We could assign an IP address if we're using the IP protocol. We could assign an IPX address if we're using the IPX protocol, and so on. We're going to focus here on IP because that is the most widely used protocol today. And that's the protocol that you really need to understand. We're going back to our network example that we had before. We have our three hosts. We have A, we have B, we also have C, and we also have our network printer. Now, as we said just a minute ago, each of these has a physical MAC address. But we don't do much with the MAC address. Instead, what I use is its IP address. Now, for instance, on this network, we could say host A is assigned an address of 192.168.1.1. That is a logical IP address. This host could be assigned 192.168.1.2. This could be 192.168. Dot one dot three. The printer could be 192.168.1.4. When we send information using logical addresses, things work in basically the same way. We say, okay, I have this piece of information that I want to send, and in the header, instead of specifying a MAC address at this point, we specify the IP address. We have our to, and we have our from. You know, you're probably saying, well, what happened to the MAC address? Don't we do that? We do. That's actually a process of layering or nesting. The information we talked about earlier with the MAC address is still there. We just take that information and we encapsulate it inside of an, it's called an IP packet. When we say, I need to send information from 192.168.1.1 to 192.168.1.2, the network itself doesn't know who these different things are. The network deals with the MAC address only. So we have to use some type of system that takes and resolves the IP address into a MAC address. 
On an IP network, that's done using a protocol called ARP. That's Address Resolution Protocol. In essence, we say, hey, who is 192.168.1.4? And the ARP protocol is configured to send out a broadcast to all the hosts saying, whoever is 192.168.1.4, will you please send me back your MAC address? So this information goes out, goes to all the hosts on the network, and 192.168.1.1 1.1 gets it and says, I'm not 4, so I don't know who that is. Same with 2. 2 says, I'm not 4, I don't know who that is, so it doesn't respond. Same with 3. 3 says, I don't know who 192.168.1.4 is. So it ignores it. All the hosts to whom the address doesn't apply, they just ignore it. However, the host that has that address responds back saying, hey, my MAC address is, and then gives it the 12-character hexadecimal number. And that way, we can resolve these IP addresses into MAC addresses. So our network information still has the MAC portion here, and we also have our IP portion here. This is overly simplified, but that's in essence how it works. MAC addresses are pretty much straightforward. It's a hardware address, it's burned into the ROM of the chip, and that's just the way it is. Logical addressing is totally different because we can reassign things. We can say, well, you know, you used to be 192.168.1.4, you're now 192.168.1.4. It works. The reason we can get away with that is because of ARP. Even though we changed the logical address, ARP will go out again and check and say, hey, who is 192.168.1.4? And the host that now has that address will respond with its new MAC address. And that way we can get away with 